Hi guys, welcome to another honeystocks.com weekend analysis for the 22nd of February 2020. I think the, the theme of the, the emails and messages that I've been getting over the last few days is obviously what's happening with the, the drop in the market. What are we seeing? Is this the start of the corrective phase that I've been talking about for the last few weeks? Um, what I'm going to be doing is really just kind of walking you through my own personal thought process. I think obviously when we think about technical analysis and charting, there's a lot of you out there that maybe think it, it doesn't have any value. A lot of you will be looking at the economic factors. Um, obviously charts are my thing. Hopefully this kind of gives you a little bit of insight this week. I think the message as it has been for the last few weeks is I think caution is absolutely the, the way to kind of proceed moving forward over the next few days until the market really presents us with a direction one way or the other. I think it's not a time to be aggressive. I, I think this is a, a time to really protect capital, manage risk, and hopefully that's reflected in the, the charts. And I hope it makes sense to everybody. I think you all follow me because I like to, to present clean charts and, and make things easy to follow. Um, so hopefully, you know, you get a lot of insight. So as always, guys, let's go and dive into the charts and let's see what they're telling us. So the analysis that you're about to watch, guys, is actually the analysis that I've provided my subscribers and clients this week. I think it's very, very important and I've made this decision probably within the last 30 minutes or so since I recorded our intro um, to release this to social media. I think it's important and hopefully it gives you guys a bit more insight into what I actually provide my subscribers and clients on a weekly basis and also the the level of detail that I like to, to kind of go into with the overall market. So um, there's not going to be a lot of charts for you to go and buy lots of stocks for, for next week. I'm very much concentrating on the the areas of the market that you should be looking to exploit for next week. Stocks are not moving at the moment, so that there are areas that are moving. But as always, please do um, read over that. Make sure you're comfortable with it. Most of you know it by uh, by now. Just, you know, all the information is on you. I assume no responsibility for any losses that may be incurred and so forth. Obviously, most of you already know that I'm working my way towards um, my chartered status, CMT, technical analysis. It's, it's what I'm widely known for. And if you do get some added value from this, please do subscribe to our channel in the bottom right hand corner. And if you are somebody that does struggle with your trading, technical analysis, reading of the market, etc., feel free to stick around for a couple of minutes at the end. I'm going to be going over a few things with, uh, with this. So let's get into it. Hi guys, hope everyone is looking forward to the weekend. I wanted to get this one out there a little bit earlier than normal. I think what I want to do this week is really just walk you through some charts that I think are obviously super important at the moment. Obviously, the, the landscape of the market has changed in the last three days. I think that's going to be evident with some of the charts that I'm, I'm going to be walking you through today. Um, but I think it's also important that I walk you through history as well, recent history. Those of you that are maybe new to my work, maybe those of you that are new to the, the group, etc. Um, you won't know this, but over the last few years, I've been able to communicate effectively about getting defensive ahead of time before we see these big market drops. Now, that's obviously helped to save many accounts and... I think the data that we're seeing historically, I think, has application to today as well. So um, let me just walk through the charts. If anything doesn't make sense to anybody, you know, feel free to reach out to me privately. But I think it's very important that I present the data as is and you guys can obviously arrive at your own logical conclusions. Um, obviously, the message over the last few weeks has definitely been, um, you know, cautiously bullish. Uh, I think... I think it's just downright cautious now. So, yeah, manage risk closely. Start protecting that capital because 
what we've seen historically, obviously this is, we'll go back to January 2018 where we had obviously this correction here. One of the characteristics that made this correction pretty easy to, to kind of not predict, but say that we're going to get a drop pretty soon was an extreme overbought market. RSI was massively high. Now this is the Dow Jones. You can apply this to the S&P 500 as well because the S&P 500 is obviously, you know, huge correlation with the Dow. So we've seen the same thing with the S&P 500. Extreme overbought market. It's logical that we get a drop and that's exactly what we've seen. Okay. Now, when we fast forward to the correction in October 2018, the characteristic of this one was we had pretty clear divergence with RSI momentum coupled with a failed breakout. Now, you've probably heard me say many times with failed breakouts, we get fast moves in the opposite direction. And again, that's exactly what we've seen here. Now, I've highlighted this extreme volatility box. Now, I don't know if any of you remember, or, or maybe you just weren't part of the technical side of things. I didn't know the technical side of the things back then. But when we had this extreme volatility, and, and we're talking, you know, 500,000 point swings in a day, um, that was that is what was going on here. We don't want to be participating in the market at this point. And when we got this correction, we chopped about sideways. But when we start to break key support levels, that's when I was advocating shorting the market. Okay. Now, when we fast forward, obviously, to today, yes, we've seen some, some drops here and there. But what are we seeing here? With the Dow, we're looking at a potential failed breakout here, and we've got divergence. So that's obviously happened in the the last few days. We've obviously dropped below this key level. So this is the, the early warning signal to just say, let's tighten up stops. Let's protect the capital. Let's protect profits. Let's not take any chances. Yes, the market might rebound massively Monday, Tuesday. Yes, we might get a Trump tweet on Sunday night saying, you know, the market's great, deal with China, coronavirus has has um, has been eradicated. Anything could happen. But what the technicals tell us is just to get defensive. And that's the message I kind of want to, you know, put over to you guys this week. I think there's a time to be aggressive. There's always a time to be defensive. Um, obviously, I've highlighted this the last couple of weeks, the divergence. We also need to understand as well that when the market breaks key support levels and we have these failed breakouts, again, you might have heard me say that there's always an index that gets the party started. I think that index might be the Dow. What you'll find is if the Dow and the S&P 500 break key support levels, the rest of the market is likely to follow. Um, and for me, the S&P 500, I think this is the level to be uh, conscious of. Now, let me just switch over to the weekly chart. Now, again, when we get these big drops, the, the market will find support somewhere. I mean, we, we just need to look again to, you know, previous history. I mean, this is a logical buyback. The market, the weekly 200 MA, we, we got a clear bounce and you can buy the market again. So if we do see these big drops, the market's going to find support somewhere. I, I don't see that we're going to enter a, a complete market meltdown bear market or anything, but it stands to reason that we, we just need to get defensive because we don't know what is going to happen. Um, so that's really what I'm seeing with the Dow and the S&P 500. Again, we've got triple Q. I think be aware of the danger zones because I think if um, the Dow and S&P 500 drop, like I said a second ago, the, the, the tech sector, which I've got a couple of charts to follow up on the triple Q in a second, but I think this is a level that we, we absolutely need to be aware of. I think if the triple Qs drop below this level, I think that's a concern. Um, we've obviously got the Russell 2000, again, be aware of the, the danger zones. What you also have to bear in mind is with the, the Russell, when the Russell and the small caps entered their corrective phase, they dropped 27%. Now, 
that's obviously massive. So I would be very, very um, cautious here. I think if the Russell breaks below that level, I, I think the small caps, you're probably going to say good night to, to a lot of them. Um, so again, that's that's another chart. I actually think that, that you can actually get a really good read on the market just from those four four major indices. Um, to tell us most about you know what's going on. We can dive a little deeper. We can see the XLC, which is a, a tech sector. Um, potential field breakout here. We've got divergence. Again, XLK. I think this is the level where we're very, very close to breaking below that. I think given the XLC, given the Dow, etc. Again, if tech starts to roll over, that is not going to be great news. So we need to start looking at other areas of the market and that's going to be the theme of today's analysis. I'm not going to be presenting you guys with 52 week highs. I'm not going to be presenting you with stocks that are showing strength because at the end of the day, if, if stocks are declining, um, we, we don't want to be participating. We need to be looking at other areas. And I know from the, the, the chats this week, obviously when we start to get the, the, the declines on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I know there was a chart that was sent out for GDXJ, which I'm going to touch on in a second. A couple of the, the gold names, which have obviously advanced massively the last couple of days. Um, again, if you're not in the, the group chat, guys, if, if you're not um, in the, the charting chat, I, I would highly encourage you to, to get added to it because I'm able to communicate in real time with, with absolutely everybody. Um, and it'll make a lot of sense once you're in there why you should be in there. Um, so again, XLK, it's it's not a time to be a hero. It's not a time to be buying these dips, in my opinion. Um, I think there's a, a potential big issue brewing. To the other side of that, when one area of the market declines, other areas start to move. Now, we've obviously had a breakout recently in TLT. Now, for me now what you're going to see i've actually started to use uh, price alerts within optima now instead of with my broker so these green lines then um, if you ever see them it just means that i've got a price alert set for this level um, and for me tlt above 150 makes a lot of sense um, i think it would be a breakout would start to um, advance in a declining stock market um, and i think you need to look to, to kind of the safety areas obviously Gold has broken out. It's obviously moving um, precious metals again. It's a safe haven asset. It's where you can look for safety when we've got a declining market. We don't want to be shorting stocks at the moment. We don't want to be um, gambling on, on the declines. I, I know there's many of you out there that are going to be taking puts on the, the major indices on the triple Qs I've seen this week. Um, for me, it just makes more sense to just move into these defensive areas. Um, so I think gold, again, makes a lot of sense. It looks like silver is close to breaking out as well. And we've obviously got um, a chart that, that I posted to social media this week. And I thrown out there just during the week that if there's anybody out there that, that's looking at buying European stocks, um, you might want to, to kind of look at this one. Um, you can look at this particular ETF. You can have a look at the stocks aligned with that ETF. Uh, but again, I'm I'm watching this one closely. Obviously, I'm I'm European, so I, I I've got no problems buying European areas of the market. I'm not always US based, Canada based, like many of you. Um, so I'm able to, to kind of look at other areas. I think if we get a breakout here in European financials. Um, then that's going to be interesting for European banks, etc., European um, insurance companies, etc., etc., etc. But I would encourage you to look at the stocks aligned with that particular ETF, or indeed look at that overall ETF and make a decision as you know whether it's something you want exposure to. Um, now. I've had a lot of messages about semiconductors, individual semiconductor stocks. Now, 
please bear in mind that it's not always about the individual stock. Yes, NVIDIA is a great company. Yes, AMD is a good company. But it doesn't matter. If, if we're getting failed breakouts in semiconductor areas of the market, and this is obviously SMH, um, then that's a concern. Again, failed breakout, divergence. How deep is this pullback going to go? Who knows? But what it's really saying to us is when we get these failed breakouts in individual sectors, we need to start thinking about preserving profits. And again, the theme of uh, this weekend's analysis is just protect the profits, get defensive. I could be absolutely incorrect, but I think I take the view that it's easier to take buy positions back in the market um, than it is to replace lost capital. Um, so, yeah, again, do with that information as you wish. You're, you're all grown-ups. You all know how to manage your money. You all know how to manage risk. This is just a technical view of the market. Um, and given what we're seeing there, I think it makes a lot of sense to start tightening up, tightening up stop losses. Um, so, yeah, I was going to touch on the, the rotation graph this week. Um, let me just actually switch this to the weekly rotation. Now, there's a couple of things that, that obviously I, I'm picking up on here. Now, this is obviously long term. I know that there was somebody, I can't remember where it was, during the week posted the weekly rotation graph and showing the, the move into defensive areas which has been accumulating over the last few weeks. That's what we're seeing. So TLT, gold, XLU, uh, utilities, um, there's obviously been a rotation. Now, this is this is why the, the weekly rotation can be sometimes a little bit misleading because obviously we can see here the Sky ETF is moving into a leading area of the market. That's not the case in my opinion with the breakdown that we're seeing in um, obviously the tech sectors ETFs so I oftentimes like to just drill it down to the daily rotation just to kind of see what's actually happening just on a short shorter term basis I find that that's a more useful rotation graph but that's just my personal preference um, again we can see XLU TLT they're, they're obviously starting to advance but we can see obviously SMH is starting to decline um, and Sky is actually on the decline as well. So we're, we're definitely seeing a, a bit of a rotation into these defensive areas. So obviously I've just talked a lot about the, the overall market, what I'm seeing. The other thing to say is that over the last two days I've ripped through about 1500 charts and I'm seeing the same um, scenario play over and over we're seeing declines uh, if i just actually switch back to the um is it spy or is it I guess. yeah um we're, we're seeing more let less stocks participating obviously what we're seeing declines in stocks that are trading above their 50 period simple moving average as well so that's just showing us that there's weakness in the market, real weakness. Um, so out there, just just start getting defensive, guys. Um, if you've not been defensive, I know many of you have already gone to cash. Um, I think it makes starting to make a lot of sense. Yes, we're going to have stocks that are continuing to work. Um, trade updates, ENPH. Um, obviously, a huge congrats to everybody. I know most of you are in, um, but again, I, I, I don't see the point in, in leaving a, a stop loss way down here at 47. I, I think you need to start thinking about tightening up stops, preserving profits, etc. Just on the off chance that we do get uh, further declines. Now, crowd, yet yeah, frustrating one. Um, We've obviously had declines over the last couple of days. It does look like we've got a bit of support. I think what I would want to say here is if we do start to get, get a bit of a rally, um, 
just start moving your, your stop loss up with that rally. Um, again, I, I don't see the point. Obviously, well placed stop loss, 58.50. That was obviously the, the alert. I don't see the point in waiting for that to get hit if the market's going to decline. So I think if we do get any rallies here, I think you just start moving up your stop loss and start protecting capital. Um, don't sit there and just wait for that stop loss to be hit given the overall market conditions at the moment. Um, that that would be the message with crowds. Um, again, PayPal stop loss. I've got just under this level here. Again, we want to see a rally over the, the next Monday, Tuesday, maybe with, with a couple of stocks. Um, if we get that, I think, again, just start moving the stop loss up with it would make a lot of sense. Again, don't just sit there and be passive and just wait for that stop loss to get hit. Because if we do see the market declines, um, it's, it's going to be a massively frustrating one. Um, ABV, again, um, just... Be strategic stop loss below here i did actually notice that obviously biotechs did okay uh, thursday friday which with abv being a big component of the biotech area you know if we're going to see biotech become a defensive play which would be really strange to me um but if we do see it then again just just be strategic i know some of you bought this breakout here again if you've not de-risked your position already just be strategic uh, with your stop loss placement don't utilize the atr trailing stop place it below um lows uh, i think we've got a candle here if you just let me zoom in um yeah we've got that date there on the 20th of february so just place it below the 20th the low on the 20th but again, if we start to advance here, just start moving your stop loss up with it. Just seems to make a lot of sense to me. Massive uh, congrats to everybody. I, I know there's a lot of you that have cashed in recently on uh, health insurance innovations. Again, messages that this thing could still run even in a declining market. So just be strategic with your stop loss placement. Uh, don't let it get too far away. Um, again, placing it below, you know, certain lows of the day there, I, again, 20th of February. Don't sit there and be passive and wait for an ETR trailing stop to, to be hit. If you've not already got it below the, the this Fibonacci level here, I think it makes a lot of sense to just, you know, start to kind of move the, the stop up strategically uh, with price. Eventually you'll get stopped out, but... You know, you're going to get stopped out with a, a big profit on that one. Um, so, ah, right. Getting a bit of a sore throat from talking so fast. Um, charts that, that I think you can look at for the, the short to medium term. Okay. The market's still in a structural uptrend. But if we're going to see a bit of a decline or a corrective phase... These are areas that I think you need to add to your watch list. So we've got GDXJ. Now th this is obviously the, the chart that, that I obviously posted to the, the chart groups this week was this one, how we were breaking out. Obviously we had a big advance on Thursday, Friday. Um, but again, just build out the analysis. We've obviously got a breakout. We're hoping that this one starts to move towards 50. That would be a re-evaluation point. That would be a compound point. You can obviously switch over to the daily chart so you can see it um, clear as day. We've got a breakout followed by continuation. There's a bit of room to run with um, RSI. I think GDXJ needs to be added to your watch list. Um, now, obviously, this is one of the, um, the stocks that I posted on because when we have gold moving... Um, we can look to the, the gold ETFs, we can look to the individual gold names, the companies aligned with the ETFs, etc. Uh, for those of you that didn't pick up my watch list of gold companies, go back into the, the charting chat. Um, I posted it on Friday, the, the, the S&P Utilities ETF. Um, 
and also my personal gold watch list as well. So go go in and, and hunt those down and, and add them to your own watch lists. But we're obviously, we've had a monster move recently. I, I don't think you need to go chasing this one. But if gold is going to continue to advance, I think any weakness in KGC can be bought. Yes, I completely understand that this is not a stock that I would typically post on given that it's trading at around 550, 590. Um, but those are the stocks that people are going to buy. You're going to have everybody jumping on on, on board these ones. Um, penny stock traders. Um, so these are ones that, that are going to move. And that's why I posted it to the, the chart group the other day. And obviously this has had a 10% move in a couple of days. Um, so... Absolutely, KGC, add it to your watch list. Um, GDX is another gold miner ETF. I've got an alert set there for 3120. I think if we get a breakout above resistance dating back to, to August 2016, um, that's not bearish. Um, I would expect the gold miners to, to obviously move with it. Obviously, this is another stock uh, Barrick Gold, again, we had a breakout here. Again, this is the, the other stock that, that I posted on. It was KGC and Barrick Gold that, that I commented uh, during the weaker areas. We've obviously got a, a breakout. It looks like we've got a bit of continuation. For those of you that bought that, I know there's a few of you that did. Um, obviously, we have a re-evaluation point, and then we've got a compound opportunity there, I think above 23.80. Uh, so that's a, a stock that if it's not on your watch list you, you should probably add it um again utilities uh, traditional defensive area of the market american waterworks is is one of those that that you would want to be participating in um, utilities have had a huge move recently um rob i know this is a favorite of yours I, i'm sure you've bought in at multiple points already uh, but again, it looks like we've got a breakout. It looks like we're getting a bit of a retest. And again, if the market is going to decline the broader market, again, you'd expect utilities to have things like breakout, successful retests, etc. So um, that that's one that I wanted to highlight to you as well. Um, finally, now I'm not advocating buying this, but given that absolutely everybody has asked me, comment about, commented about it, is this a traditional earnings discount? Yes, it is. Um, it looks like we've got the um, support level in place there, which is a previous breakout area. Um, but do I want to be buying it in the face of a declining market? Possibly not. Um, but I've, I've, I've put this in here for you guys anyway. If you guys think the market is not going to drop, if you think... ZS is a good risk to reward, you know, proposition. If you like it, it looks like we may have found support. Will I personally be buying it? Probably not. Um, and I think if you break this level here, you could probably short it and take puts. Um, I think the question is, you know, it's it's not whether or not ZS is a good company. I think earnings shown that it's decent. The real question is, does Wall Street want to own it? And that's the big question of the day. Um, so what happens from here is, is absolutely down to Wall Street. Um, yes, it's an earnings discount, but overall market, do I want to be buying it or moving into defensive areas? I think defensive areas make a lot of sense to me personally. Um, but guys, that's the weekend analysis for you. Hopefully this has all made sense. If nothing makes sense, if, if you're completely lost, um, you know, feel free to communicate with me over the weekend. I'm going to be back to the laptop on, on Sunday evening as normal. Um, for those of you that have yet to respond regarding the options, um, there's been a, a big uptake in it. There's um, We're going to be getting everybody access to the options program this weekend. We're going to be building in the uh, options community um, the forum and Sean is going to be coming on board on the uh, the 1st of March.
but I think it makes a lot of sense to just get everybody access to the content in the the week before, just so that you guys can obviously just you know hit the ground running and um, have your questions ready for him because I know he's 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 actually quite excited to come in for the month. Um, so yeah, if you are wanting to learn options, guys, this is a fantastic opportunity. But you know, naturally, it's up to to you. You know, if if you want to take advantage of that. But um, guys, enjoy your weekend, and I'll pick up with you all soon. Thanks again. Now, as I said at the start of this video, guys, if you're somebody out there that does struggle a little bit with your trading. Maybe you want to get better at technical analysis. Maybe you're trying to fit trading around a, a career, a business, family life. Maybe you don't have enough time to, to go through 1500 charts like I do every weekend. Uh, maybe we're a place that, that you might want to, to consider uh, basing yourself. With our annual membership, what that provides you is one year access to our trading ideas, our scans, our premium weekend analysis. You obviously got an incredible trading community. Uh, we provide charting requests. So if you're somebody out there that wants a second opinion, we're on hand to, to be able to do that. But what we're doing and what we've been doing since the start of the year is any signups receive full access to our technical analysis program, which as you can see there, we do charge quite a lot of money for that. Um, it's an incredible trading program. And you know, if you see the value in that, then you know, by all means, feel free to register your details below. Check us out on our website. Um, again, just to give myself a little bit of credibility, um, I am working my way towards my chartered status, uh, CMT. It's everything in the world of technical analysis, and that's what I'm widely known for. Obviously, my website, super popular um, technical analysis, market insight website. Feel free to go and scrutinize that. But the really cool thing about what we do at honeystocks.com is with our trading alerts, we actually log every single trade alert on our website for complete and open transparency. So the types of stocks that we recommend to our subscribers and our clients, um, we log on our website. So you can go and see if the types of stocks that we recommend are right for you. We're not recommending penny stocks. We're not a you know, a get rich quick day trading group or anything like that. We very much have a time horizon that's weeks to months with our positions. And if you're somebody out there that is maybe trying to get away from day trading, we can probably help you in some way. Obviously, you know, ENPH, I've not updated this for a while, but that's well over 100% now as well. Um, but these are what our trade alerts look like. Some of you have watched this um, in the past, but yeah, it's um, it's a very cool place to be. Very clear instruction with our trade alerts. But as you can see, there's a lot more to what I provide. There's obviously the, the premium weekend analysis and there's just an incredible trading community behind me as well. Um, so, you know, if you like this kind of charting that's clear, clear instruction and you'd like to, you know, part with $500 for the privilege of coming on board, we only... Uh, we're only opening it up to 200 members. I think there's around 30, maybe 40 spaces left. So, you know, the, the, the spots are, are running out fast since we announced it just a few months ago. So um, this is a, obviously an incredibly sad picture. But again, this is how cool our community is. This is Dustin. Um, he's still trading from his hospital bed. Get well soon, Dustin. And... You know, this is a, a chart that, that's obviously done very, very well. And Dustin was the one that brought this to the group. I cleaned up the chart, send it out. Everybody's making money. So it really is a community vibe. It's a community of incredible people, incredible traders. It's not full of, you know, day traders that are, you know, shouting out nonsense or anything like that. It's one of the reasons why I have an annual subscription and not a cheap monthly subscription. Um, the quality of the, the individual, the quality of the investor trader is a lot higher and that's the, the way that I'm building things. So, you know, if you are trying to fit things around a career or a business, get away from day trading. You want better consistency and you want to learn this stuff for yourself, then again, I would urge you to just check out our website and you know register your details. Because I know what it's like 
hunting around YouTube, learning from all the losses. A lot of you will be in distress from late last week and it doesn't need to be that way. So if you're open to learning a new way, guys, feel free to, to, to check us out. But from the bottom of my heart, thank you very, very much for watching and I hope you got something from this. Thanks very much.